Hello. Um, right, part three on the on the talisman. So as you saw in um, parts one and two, we took a look at these very um, battered speakers, very damaged. Um, and I've kept in contact with Adam, who sent them to me. He got them for not much money. And um, as we found out, we've got uh, woofers with big creases in the cones. If you remember that and one of the tweeters pushed in mesh damaged um, diaphragm and yeah just the cabinets in a very sorry state really um, veneer chipped off the bottom and, and things like that um, so I mean the long and the short of it was we needed new drivers and if we're putting new drivers in unless we can get the exact same ones, um, we are building a new speaker. Um, I did have a hunt around the workshop and the store I've got in the garage, and I found some suitable drivers. Um, I had an email exchange with Adam uh, about the cost uh, associated with physically fitting the new drivers into the um, existing cabinets, that's one thing, and then you know we've we've got to design and build a new crossover so really we're just starting with a box and when we totted it all up um, for me to do that as a job um, you know even being careful with my time um, it was still clocking up so you would have something unique but um, and to a degree you know you can tailor it to the person's sound preference um, but to do that for a client with something like this is not cost effective. Um, a really good pair of these I think go for about 250 maybe 300 quid. <clears throat> the materials and time involved with me doing anything with these, in effect building a new speaker, would far exceed that. Um, it's just the way it goes. Um, you know, if I do project speakers, uh, if I buy a rough speaker, rough cabinet and stick new drivers in it and build a new crossover well you know my time is that's just my time um, it's more of a little hobby really or I like to build speakers and as well as the client work I do so um, yeah on that subject I'm I've been working on and thinking about this for a long time I'm working on hopefully my own little line of speakers three speakers that um, I want to build um, one is going to be um, an LS35A inspired two-way. The other is going to be an LS3 slash six inspired three-way. And what I'm hoping to do with those is use the same tweeter in both of them. The three six will have a kind of a mid-range dome, and then we'll have a woofer a five inch in the three uh, three five and eight inch in the three six from the same range of drivers um, and i think i'm going to try and build my own version of the 44 the ditton 44 um, so those three speakers but that's a long way down the line anyway so the long and the short of it is adam because he didn't pay much for these and i've spent a bit of time on it has kindly donated these to me said so just just keep them um, so they've been donated to the Haycross Audio Benevolent Fund, which is always a winner. So now I have a pair of cabinets and what am I going to do with them? Well, obviously, like I say, the original drivers are shot. I mean, this particular tweet is all broken at the back and everything else. It's, it's just no good. The crossovers are unique to these drivers and this cabinet. Um, but I can use that board and rebuild something on the back of that and if you remember I had or have quite a few of these six inch woofers polypropylene um, and they're pretty nice so um, I offered them up last time they didn't quite fit we need to enlarge the openings or the cutouts to recess these and these QTX tweeters, which are kind of, I think they're 35 mil, the, the dome on them. 
and I like them because they play low and if you can the smaller dome or cone you can have playing as low um, it just helps with um, imaging the speaker won't beam as much so I like these but obviously you know we need to physically fit these so that's what this video is about um, modifying the cabinets to get them in there okay here we go right so I'm in the process of recessing the new drivers and for those of you that are interested this is a little tool I made up a while ago it just fits on my trim router and I put these screws in wherever needed and then I can just run that round um, my shop vac has a socket outlet on it and when you turn on your power tool that starts and my hoover attachment goes on there so I can do this nice and clean um, yeah that works really well so one down um, got the tweeter to do I'll do that next and then yeah we're we're cooking what the hell I've um, just been dismantling the other speaker and as I pulled out the polyfill uh, <laughs> there's a baby's dummy <laughs> oh my god so uh yeah oh fucking hell there's a pen as well blimey what else have we got in here anything how bizarre hmm either well how did they get in there Obviously, someone's taken this apart before, but how do you drop a dummy and a pen inside a speaker? Weird. Right, so that's the drivers um, cut out now. I've still got to tidy up the tweeter a little bit because there's, uh, I'll show you on this one, because there's this bit here, I can't run my tool around. So I've had to stop there and there, but I managed to kind of plunge a uh, reference there and mark the rest. So um, I'll just carefully do it freehand and then sand it out if needed. Um, the other way of doing it is to put a board in here with a new center mark and then I've got one of these things that I fit onto the trim router and then I can cut a perfect circle with that that is pretty good or I've got my um, table router there that I built that I can do the same thing with um, but yeah I've given the fronts a quick sand interestingly this trim piece comes off the front of the port. The port is still in there. So I can give that a, a spray of black. I'm gonna stain these. Um, actually the veneer is pretty good, but down the bottom it's uh, chipped. So what I'll probably do is glue and stabilize that, sand it again, and then I'll oil this with something much darker than we had before, which will disguise this. Um, but yeah, so I've got that one to finish off. But in terms of fitting the new drivers, um, yeah, kind of there really. So then I'll flatten off the rest of the cabinet. This will spray black again um, and hopefully make something out of these. <laughs>
Right, in case any of you were wondering, um, that's what three or four hours of routering and sanding looks like. So um, obviously we've done the cutouts for the for the drivers, open those up. Still got a bit of tidying to do probably, um, but everything fits now. The front has had a good sand. I've just panel wiped it. That's why it's a bit mottled here. Um, that'll dry out. Um, the sides as well. So these, this is actually solid wood. This is a veneer. Um, so I'm going to stain this with something darker than it was before. Um, so I've sanded out all the nicks and chips and things as much as I dare on the veneer, but it's pretty good. Um, so the rest of the cabinet is MDF. So I've sanded this and got out all the lumps and bumps. The corners weren't too bad in the end. I've kind of sanded them square. Um, I'm not going to fill them or anything like that. I don't need to. I've just sanded them out. So um, yeah, let me turn it round. So on the back there, all sanded. So yeah, so the black parts, I'm just going to respray satin black. Get a really nice finish on those. And then the front wood sections we will stain probably in like a dark oak or something um, but yeah there you go looking good Right, so new gaskets for the uh, drivers. So I'm going to, I've pre drilled the holes, so I'm going to drop them in now. Right, so cabinet wise, I think we're probably about there. I've got a few tweaks to, um, to make here and there, but yeah, drivers are in. Um, 
so next thing will be lead wires off the tweeter and woofer and um, start designing our crossover so yeah the covers are done as well they were pretty straightforward so all looking good right um part four will be measurements crossovers and hopefully listening to them all right catch you soon